Hey everyone, back to you into today's first video. We're going to look at some autumn analogues for today's first video. Uh, my good friend Stuart Markham has provided Gazovis with a few analogues um, for the autumn to see what may be uh, around the corner for the autumn season. This is all in anticipation for next week's uh, autumn forecast, which we will be releasing at Gazovis next Sunday. Um, and uh, the analogues that we get from Stuart here will go into that autumn forecast, as will the seasonal model. Uh, as well so this sort of part one if you like of the, the autumn forecast that you will be seeing um next sunday uh just say so later on i'll have a new update for el nino um on the enso page that's gonna be very interesting there's a lot of new uh, information i've put into this one so i hope you like it. it's a bit different compared to what we've done before um, and uh, there'll be a few different things uh, to see with that one. So come back this afternoon uh, for that. But I say this video is um, is focusing on uh, Stuart's autumn analogues. Now, before I get on with that, just very quickly to say about the ads, there's links to articles on all of the pages at Gazzard. Go and have a browse with widgets. If there's any articles that you're interested in, please click through. You have to go for a read the article. Thanks very much for doing that. There's also video ads on most pages. They open out in the content. We watch them and close back up again. Thanks for getting involved. And thanks for doing that. I'm doing this on Saturday evening. It's very, very warm uh, this evening. So I may stop and have a, a quick uh, sip of um, some ice water. I hope you bear with me. You have to do that. Do you want to start off on um, Stuart's website? Surely weather uh, forecasts for Northwest England and uh, the UK. It's a fantastic website. You find the link to it on the uh, links page. Um, he also has a uh, lovely um, Twitter feed as well. Uh, so you can find him at Weather Stew. Uh, but this is the website, Surely Weather, and do check out Surely. It's got uh, loads of charts, rainfall, radar, all of that sort of thing, and satellite imagery. Um, so, wonderful website. Uh, do give that uh, a look if you would like to do that. So we're going to start off uh, with September, first of all. And what we're looking at, first of all, is El Nino. Because I don't think I'm giving anything away from the El Nino update to say that it is going to be an El Nino autumn and an El Nino winter uh, as well. So uh, what Stuart's done, he's uh, gone back and had a look at all of the uh, moderate to strong to very strong El Nino events. And then created some analogues based on uh, those events for September, October, November. So the years that uh, Stuart has looked at uh, here is uh, 1957, 1963, 1965, 1972, 1982, 1986, 1997, 1998, 1999, 1997, 2002 and 2009. We will be able to narrow that down a bit more as we go along. But those are sort of the, the basic years um, that have very strong uh, or strong or very strong uh, El Nino events going on during uh, those autumns. So this is how um, September looks if you uh, was to combine all of those years and create uh, a 500 bit of our height uh, flow chart uh, for September. It would look like this and uh, a lot of high pressure is in there actually. We've got high pressure sitting just to the west of the UK. The uh, jet stream is going rather like that. So it does imply quite a settled uh, September. Maybe quite a coolish September though because uh, if I just get rid of that very quickly. The centre of the high pressure is actually uh, generally to the west of the country. So at times we could be pulling down some fairly cool air uh, from the west or the northwest at times around that ridge. But it would give us a lot of settled weather um, with that one. Going through to October, high pressure can Continues and in fact it becomes centrally based over the country uh, so this is how the analogue forecast for October looks based on all these years from 1957 through to 2009 it had sort of moderate strong or very strong El Nino events it has um, an anomalous ridge of high pressure uh, across the country that doesn't mean that we can't get deviations from this maybe one or two of these years would have deviated from this pattern but overall averaging it all out that is uh, how the analogue looks for October lots of settled weather but then as we go through into November on all of these years we get a huge flip around and we go to very below average heights um, as we go through into November so that's how it looks for November that deep trough of low pressure uh, around the UK and in the Atlantic as well the jet stream is running through rather like that so it's a strong jet stream it's running right through the country that could be a pretty wet November probably a very wet November could be stormy at times as well 
on that sort of setup. Uh, the mean trough is a little bit displaced from its normal position, which would be uh, in this sort of area, uh, really around green and nice, and it's a little bit uh, displaced further south. So uh, it could allow some cooler conditions to come through at times, particularly in the north and the west. But it is a very wet looking signal that possibly quite stormy as well. Now, uh, Stuart's uh, also had a look at the sea surface temperature anomalies in the Atlantic and uh, in the Pacific Ocean for this uh, time of year, for August, and uh, come up with some uh, years that are very close um, to uh, this year, particularly in terms of the El Nino. So, uh, taking out some of those years that we just started off with, we come up with 1957, 1972, 1986, 1991, 1997 and 2009 so we've taken out about half of the years and we've still got um, half of them left uh, for um, some analogues going forward particularly in terms of how strong the El Nino is right now but I think perhaps the cool Atlantic is also included in these as well I'm not sure I have to ask you uh, about that so uh, looking at these years and again going through September October November we actually come out with a very similar uh, look Signal. So now we've just narrowed things down to 1957, 1972, 1986, 1991, 1997 and 2009. And what we see, as I say, is a very similar uh, signal really. For September, the 500 millimetre heights look like this with high pressure again, close to the UK but generally centred uh, out to west. The trough over Scandinavia has deepened a little bit though. So it's perhaps a cooler signal now uh, for September. We're probably bringing down more in west sort of northerly, northwesterly winds. On the basis of this, we could have a fairly cool September um, coming up on the basis of uh, all of these years. But probably got a lot of dry weather uh, with that ridge very close uh, to the country. October still looks very anti-cyclonic. Um, so uh, again, the above average heights are in there right over top of the country uh, for October. So even if you take out half of the years, we still come out with a very similar signal for uh, September and October, which is quite a lot of high pressure. Uh, dry October, probably quite a dry September, Difference may be near normal temperatures for October, but quite cool temperatures perhaps in September. And then as we go through to uh, November, look at this, it's a, it's a similar scenario again, a similar signal, in that there's a complete flip around for November, and it turns very, very unsettled with this deep trough of low pressure in the Atlantic, close to the UK, the jet stream coming right through the country like that. So when we take out half the uh, years, um, or keep all of the years, it doesn't make much difference really. The signal for September, October, November, very similar on all of these years in terms of the analogues, which is a quite a bit of dry weather through September and October, perhaps quite cool in September, near normal in October, and then a big, big flip takes place as we get into November. It turns very much more unsettled, um, really wet, possibly quite stormy as well into um, into. November. Now, Stuart's also had a look at the uh, solar cycles. Um, the current cycle that we're in, solar cycle uh, 24, we're coming out of solar maximum, as we know, and uh, we're dropping down to solar minimum, but we're not in solar minimum uh, yet. So there's a couple of solar cycles that Stuart has sort of matched quite closely to um, the current uh, situation, and that is solar cycles 19 and solar cycles 20, and particularly focusing on the year 1963, don't worry, not talking about the winter of 1963, talking about the autumn of 1963, which uh, Stuart has highlighted um, just here. Uh, so the autumn of 1963, Stuart thinks is quite close to uh, the current situation in terms of the solar uh, cycle. And also the autumn of 1972, which is from solar cycle 20. Um, Stuart has uh, pinpointed that one's been fairly close uh, to where we are right now. So if we look at those um, those couple of years, 1963, 1972, in terms of the uh, 500 millimetre height anomalies, we come out looking like this. It's a similar signal for September. We've got a ridge here uh, to the west of the country. A lot more troughing to the south, though, but... Overall, it's a similar uh, type scenario there, uh, with high pressure close to the country, probably quite cool, but fairly dry through the course of September. There would be rain threatening the south, perhaps, 
at times. October, look at this, very similar signal again uh, with 63 and 72 in that we build that ridge right over top of the country. So a very dry signal going into October. Do we get the flip in November? Look at that. Yes, we do. Very unsettled November being signaled there um, in terms of the solar uh, solar cycles where we are in solar cycles from the years 1963 and 1972. The purple curves are around the UK, so it's a really unsettled one. Lots of heavy rain, possibly some gales coming through as well. The jet stream is running right through the country. So in terms of the solar cycles and in terms of what uh, El Nino is doing, looks like we've got uh, very similar uh, sort of patterns e emerging here. Yeah. Now, out of all of those years, uh, Stuart has pinpointed 1972 as being sort of the closest uh, year. Uh, Discounting 63 a little bit. Um, I'm not sure quite why Stuart did that, but 1972 is the closest uh, match in terms of uh, these years with the uh, El Nino and also um, with the solar cycle uh, as well. So just quickly looking at how 1972 played out uh, through the course of the autumn. Um, it, Stuart's broken this down into uh, first half, second half of uh, each autumn month. So for the first half of September, we see a ridge here in the Atlantic with a trough uh, up to the northeast. So again, very, uh, very much along the lines of all the analogs we've just been looking at um, with the flow going rather uh, like that. It means there's a fair amount of dry weather, some rain at times down in the south, perhaps, but quite a bit of dry weather. But it is cool, and uh, September 1972 was an unusually cool month. We'll have a look at the central temperature on that in a moment. But uh, there's a lot of northerly, northwesterly influences through that month, so temperatures uh, were depressed. And that continues, really, as we go through into the second half of September, 1972 with this ridge sitting up to the north and uh, again would have been pulling in a lot of sort of northerly maybe even northeasterly winds now would be fairly dry it would be very cool probably with some early season frost it was a it was a notably cool uh, september that 1972 um and uh, you have to go back to uh, september 1952 uh, to find a september that was uh, colder up to that point anyway. October uh, 1972, the first half looks like this with the ridge right in through the coast, so lots of dry uh, weather. Flows probably on easterly, so probably bringing in easterly winds there. But uh, overall, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of dry weather through the first half of October 1972. And the ridge stays with us into the second half of October uh, 72 as well. Plenty of dry weather uh, through there, albeit the ridge is in a different position down at centre uh, to the west of us. And probably a bit milder as well uh, as the air is coming in off the Atlantic. And not from a particularly uh, cold source from that sort of part of the central Atlantic. But lots of dry weather uh, through October uh, 72 is the signal there. And then as we go through to November... 72. The first half it looks like this, turning much more unsettled there. Uh, low pressure is coming back to the north of the country as the ridge is slipping down to the south. And we bring these westerlies through the country rather like that. So the westerly is returning for into no the first half of November 1972, um, probably turning wet and windy from the north and west. And then the second half of the month turns very unsettled with a deep trough of low pressure to the east. The ridge is going down towards uh, the Mediterranean and probably turning a little bit chilly as well. This could be stormy, it could also be chilly because the uh, flow will be going from a northwesterly direction. So maybe the first last of winter beginning to come through there um, at the end or in the second half of November 1972. So that's how the analogues uh, are looking. Uh, we've broken it down step by step and we finish up coming out with 1972 as being the uh, analog for this autumn uh, that's what Stuart thinks um, that uh, 1972 is the closest analog uh, for what we're facing this year the central England temperature for the autumn 1972 looks like this uh, this is 72 just here so uh, September was a notably cool month at 11 
really cool uh, September uh, in 1972. Not surprising from the charts that we just looked at. October, about average, 10.6. So uh, that wasn't too bad. And then November, about average as well, at 6.3. So other than September, not a great deal of uh, cool weather in terms of the uh, temperature anomalies anyway. Although I do think by the second half of November, it will probably have been turning a little bit on the colder uh, on the colder side so uh, that's what we're looking at for this autumn in terms of the analogs it's 1972 uh, that comes out the closest in terms of where we are with the solar cycle and in terms of where we are with El Nino don't forget there'll be a new update on El Nino uh, this afternoon um, so it's 72 in terms of the analogs we will be having a look at the models next week and we'll be combining them with Stuart's information in terms of the analogs and once we do that we're going to come up with an autumn forecast for the United Kingdom from GazOffice.com next Sunday so please come back for that that's all for now thanks for watching and don't forget to return to the website this afternoon to the Enso page where you'll be able to see all the latest on El Nino. There may be storms coming up later as well, so don't be surprised if there's a storm watch update later also. That's it for now then. Thanks for watching.